Sir, what is the latest reporting that you have on whether or not President Biden will be pushed aside and whether or not there is now a counter coup underway to keep him in place? I think that Democrats right now are operating in two different senses of reality. If you talk to Democrats on Capitol Hill, they describe a sort of sense of uh, inevitability that it's only a matter of time before Joe Biden accepts reality and steps down. They believe that having bringing out the big guns that Chuck Schumer is now allowing these private conversations to be aired, that it's clear Pelosi is making moves, that Biden will see the writing on the wall. If you talk to White House folks, they suggest that the polls have been wrong before, Joe Biden has come back from worse odds before, and he's not going anywhere. And both sides seem really convinced that they're correct. So it's hard to get a, a good read on what's going to happen next when this is already unprecedented. Sarah, I had a conversation with Ben Dominich. I was there during the transition from Ronald Reagan to George H.W. Bush, and everybody in that White House knows they're out the door, and they, and they know that Kamala Harris isn't keeping them around because they hate Kamala, and Kamala hates them. That's been widely reported. There are a lot of lives, careers, and money at stake in this, and it's all behind the scene. Are you picking up drips and drabs of this? Oh, absolutely. I think some of the, the Democrats outside the White House on Capitol Hill in the party see that as a reason why Biden remains so entrenched, a reason why they're in the situation that they're in now in the first place, because of those people who have a lot of stake, who, whose careers are on the line and tied so closely to Joe Biden's incumbency, have an interest in keeping him in power, even if he's not able to execute the functions of the commander in chief. And even if he's uh, on, a, on a glide path to defeat in November, there's, there's some finger pointing at this inner circle of aides who depend on Joe Biden for their job. Uh, I don't, you know, it's hard to tell without being in the room how much of Joe Biden's stubbornness as a result of his own desire to stay in power, the people around him trying to keep him there. But, you know, there's there's a lot of blame on those aides that you're talking about. Now, I am I'm really amazed. You've been on the Hill for a long time that Chuck Schumer's office. You know, this story leaked to the Ruthless podcast first before anyone else had it. That's because I'm sure Josh Holmes, who worked for Mitch McConnell, had ties into the Republican leader's office who heard from the Democratic leader's office about schedule changes. And Chuck and it just flipped out and Ruthless podcast got the scoop. But I have never seen the Hill leak this badly on the Democrat side. The, the discipline's all gone, and it's pretty clear Nancy Pelosi's still the leader, not Hakeem Jeffries. It's intentional, right? The Democrats have been having these private conversations, and we've known that since the night of the debate. And some of these conversations now, especially the ones involving leadership, are becoming public because the principals want them to become public. I think there was some frustration even among some rank and file Democrats, especially the ones who stuck their neck out early on to say Joe Biden should go. That leadership maybe privately shared their sentiments, but wasn't speaking up publicly. And now you see the most powerful Democrats start to make moves towards making those grievances known. What you don't hear a lot of on Capitol Hill, which I think is pretty alarming for Democrats, is really any substantive conversations about what comes next. The uncertainty and the chaos that would follow a Joe Biden withdrawal from the race would be enormous. And Democrats are not having serious conversations about what they would do in the event that Joe Biden stepped aside. And that's, they're, they're taking a huge gamble by pushing for him to step down anyway. Sarah, last question. I honestly do not know how Democrats could do anything other than nominate the vice president, or they will be charged with the systemic racism that they have charged the Republicans and everybody in the country with if they throw overboard the first African-American woman uh, who has been in high office. If they did that for you know a white woman like Gretchen Whitmer or somebody like Gavin Newsom, their base would crack in ways that Humpty Dumpty would uh, find uh, shocking. Right. There are so many risks to that approach beyond just the, you know, identity politics that would be at play there. Only Kamala Harris can access all the money that Joe Biden has raised. Another candidate would have to start from zero. So there are huge risks with not nominating her. There's also risks with nominating her. She's not popular. They've kept her 
out of the public eye for years for a reason. If she's reintroduced to the American people and put out there for 16 weeks to the left till the election, there's some, some risks of sticking with her as well. So there are, are a, a substantial number of Democrats who still see Joe Biden as the less risky option. And there's really no, no telling who's right. They're in a lose-lose situation, the yeah. Democrats. Last night, Donald Trump talked about the border a lot. The borders are as Kamala Harris. Yeah, they got a nominator, but boy, if Joe Biden does step aside, we will have much to talk about.